I seem to be telling these stories in reverse order, I guess just because they're occurring to me in reverse order, but this is the, uh, this is the tale of the Leaping Wizards. Uh, where to start with this one? Okay, um, back in the day, when I was in high school, which was about 1999, we had no, there was really no role-playing going on in Arizona. This is not a great town for, for like, Dungeons and Dragons role-playing. Uh, it just really wasn't that mainstream at that point. And this was back in the day, this was before 3rd edition, really, so this was like AD&D. So, um, it was really kind of fringe. It's a lot more accepted now. You can get games a lot easier here. And organized play, especially, is, is a lot bigger than it ever was. But, in 1999, you really couldn't find a group. Uh, you were lucky if you, had a, if you had any kind of RPG group. And so, I was lucky, uh, for the most part. But this was just when I was getting started. So... Um, the best way to get started, especially if you're new, is organized play. And by that I mean, uh, Wizards of the Coast uh, ran what's called the RPGA. It still runs, probably. In fact, I'm almost certain they do. Um, the RPGA is called the Role Playing Gamers Association, and what it was, was, you had, uh, you would pay a membership fee, and you would be involved in official uh, officially sanctioned games that are run by other sanctioned players. So there was actually kind of a there was there was kind of a consistent universe, gaming universe among all the players nationwide. And so everyone would kind of be playing the same games at the same general time. And there was a common pool of it really wasn't that balanced, but if okay, let me put it this way. If you got a magic item from one of these adventures, you actually had to get it certed. By that, I mean there's a certificate. So, like, a, an, a, a sanctioned DM had to sign off that you got this magic thing. So, like, if you got a plus one sword, a, a DM had to sign off that you got this sword. So, in that way, there was kind of some quality control, or at least control meaning. If I took my RPG character to Gen Con in, in, like, Milwaukee or something like that, that character would be legal as long as everything that I had got signed off on. But it's also a good way to meet other players. So, like, if you can't, if you don't have friends that play, you join the RPGA. You go to an RPGA event. There's other players there, and so you can join. There's no, you know, there's no requirement. You can just sit there and you can play. So, I didn't have any friends who played it really. Um, maybe two or three, but not enough that I had a D and D game going. So, what I wanted to do was I started off playing RPGA, and I had a, I had an okay time with it. But I was always kind of the DM. I, I always, almost always liked to DM more than I liked to play. And I'm a pretty good DM, or at least I fancied myself a pretty good DM. I, I, I do okay. But um, I wanted to DM. So being a DM in the RPGA is a different kind of thing. There was like a little test you had to pass, but it wasn't a big deal. If you'd read the book, you knew that you knew the shit. So, um, you know, I paid my fee, I, I got the, the DM thing, and there was a convention called, oh, what was it called? Um, it wasn't Leprechaun, Coppercon. I think it was Coppercon. That was, uh, that was a gaming convention, and so really the gaming there was pretty anemic. It was mainly board gaming or tabletop gaming. There wasn't that much in the way of RPGs. And so I contact the con and I go, uh, do, you ha do you have any R RPGA set up? And they didn't even know what I was talking about. And I'm like, Dungeons and Dragons, do you have anything set up for that? And so they go, no, 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 we don't. And so um, there was like a regional coordinator. By that I mean there was one guy in the whole RPGA. So he was like regional coordinator for Mesa or Phoenix or something like that. And so I contact him and he's like, yeah, we could get a table going on. You're DMing, right? And I go, yeah, yeah, I could DM. So... He sends me off an adventure that's a sanctioned adventure, and I forget what it's called, but it was like a first level adventure, Forgotten Realms. So I, I read this adventure, and like I said, I'm just starting out, so I was like, okay, whatever. So I kind of commit, I, I'm, I'm really committed to doing good here. So I, I, got, like, I, got this, uh, I got this mat that I can draw on, and we're going to have a little miniatures, we're going to have a great time. So I go there, and I have a little sign. I'm actually recruiting for RPGA, so like, uh, I go down there and I have a little sign-up sheet, I have little cards that I'm going to give out and, and shit like that. So I, I do this thing where we're signing up all day and at noon we're going to play this adventure. So I get six players, my brother's there, and immediately there's a problem. And I should have recognized it right away. These guys who joined 
uh, actually know, they, they knew their stuff when it came to D&D. So the first problem that came out was about three of the six, my brother included, made a specialty priest. And if you don't know what a specialty priest is, it's, they're clerics. But clerics that worship a particular god, they're kind of like, you know how, um, Spellcasters or mages can specialize in a school of magic, so like you can have an illusionist or you can have an evoker who specializes in throwing fire or something like that, you know. That's what a specialty priest is, basically, is they, they focus on one god and they focus on like one particular aspect of that god and they do it really well. So not only do they get spells, they get like a special benefit that's unique to that god. So, and what's funny was they all picked a specialty priest of the exact same goddess, Selun, who is the goddess of the moon. Because the speci specialty priests of Selun get a really great benefit and they get a really great spell. And so, <clears throat> not only are specialty priests at that time anyway, essentially broken in AD and D's because they got Clerics are so good in AD and D because they get um, they get to cast any spell that's that falls within their spheres, whereas mages get a spell book that has like five spells. They get to pick from like five, but clerics get to pick from every spell that falls under their god's purview. So they can memorize any spell, which is like three dozen. Um, they can, they don't have any particular, you, and, uh, with rare exceptions, they don't have any material components. They don't have to, like, sacrifice a pearl or a ruby to cast their spells, so it's cheap. Um, and they can cast them anytime they want, and they can heal. And they're pretty good fighters, and they have pretty decent hit points, and they can wear any kind of armor they want. So, as you can see, clerics are completely broken, and specialty priests made them even more so, because not only that, they had, they get a bonus, like a, basically a bonus feat for being a specialty priest, which in the, in the case of Saloon was, they, uh, under, a, as the moon grew fuller, they would get bonuses to hit and damage. So I think under a full moon, they got like a plus two to hit and plus two to damage. Under a new moon, they had minuses, but it was really good under a full moon. And they also got a really good cleric spell, which I think was called Moonblade which basically allowed them to summon, at any time, a magical sword made out of moonlight that had bonuses to hit on its own. So, I think, like, a specialty priest of Saloon who cast Moonblade had, like, plus four to hit, just on account of being a full moon and using the Moonblade. So it was really good. And so, just on their own, I, I'm not accusing them of cheating or anything, I'm not accusing them of, like, min-maxing, they just looked at the book and was like, wow, this class is really good. I'm going to do that. So they made a specialty cleric of Saloon, and there was like three of the six who did that. And so I'm like, already this is trouble. So like, all of a sudden, I have to introduce them to an adventure, which is actually fairly easy now that I think about it, where all of a sudden there's three specialty priests of Saloon just hanging out, which I'm guess like, well, you're all going to the same church. I guess you would be hanging out, right? But, so they do this thing, and they join... What's that? Something on her foot. Ew. Anyway, so they're doing this thing and we're running the adventure, and it's going okay. They're steamrolling any of the fights they're given. But they have to do this thing where they're escorting a... I believe they have to escort a prisoner across country to another city. So, um, one of the planned encounters in the adventure module was that they would make camp and a group of mercenaries trying to free the prisoner would ambush them in their camp. And so I read the flavor text, I'm reading the setup to the adventure, I'm like, who's on watch? And so they go, so-and-so's on watch. And I go, okay, roll your perception check, you know, roll your awareness to see if you detect the ambush. And he does. And so I go, suddenly you hear a rustling from the undergrowth. You stand up and alert your companions when suddenly... Three wizards leap from the shrubberies, brandish their quarterstaffs, and shout a challenge at you and attack. And I'm not saying the flavor text exactly the way it was written, but it was pretty close to that. Where wizards leaped out of the undergrowth, 
shouted a challenge and attacked. And the group immediately started laughing. Laughing uproariously at me because they imagined in their mind's eye they're like, shut up guys, I hear something. So they all kind of sit up and they ready their weapons. And then all of a sudden, three fucking nerds leap out of the bushes, waving sticks and shouting challenges of shouting death threats at them. <laughs> fucking knee slapper, that is. Okay. So... They start laughing at me, and I'm just humiliated. So I'm like, it's, I'm serious, that's what happens. There's, it's, I'm like, and I didn't write this shit, okay? I'm like, that's what's written there. It says three first level magic users ambush you. That's what it says. And they're like, ah, we're gonna kill these guys. And they're right, they were. Because they're talking like five guys, five or six guys, who are fucking combat beasts but three wizards three first level mages take a look at these five guys and go they're ours we're gonna fucking kill these guys outnumbered two to one and outclassed in every basic respect but oh these magic users in AD&D you know how many spells first level magic users get one one spell. You blew your wad, you were done. That was it. <laughs> that was it. One spell. In third edition and fourth, you think it's, you think it's hard being a spellcaster? You, it, it, dude, I don't want to hear, every time I hear characters bitching about stats, or I hear characters bitching about spell selection, or not enough spell slots, I want to slap them in the mouth. You guys, don't know shit, because old school, I played a mage. I played old school wizard. I got one spell. Did I bitch? No. Because that's how I roll, okay? You wanted to be a wizard. You wanted to be a wizard in Dungeons and Dragons. You had to be fucking hardcore. You had to be smart, and you had to be tough, because that universe wanted you to die. You had D4 hit points. You had a roll of a four-sided die for your hit points. You didn't get no max hit points like you do in fourth edition. You didn't get no fucking constitution bonus. You got D4, which meant you averaged two to three hit points. And if you were really unlucky, one. And you got one spell. If you were a specialty, if you were a specialist, you get two. But most people, one. So, if you you respected, you fucking respected a high-level mage, because they went through the shit. They went through the shit of having no hit points. They went through the shit of having one spell. And once they got to the point where they could throw fireballs, fifth level, when third level spells opened up. That was when they started to outstrip the fighters. And that was the genius of D&D, was because it wasn't balanced. It wasn't. Fighters and clerics started off so far ahead of everyone else. You know, fighting classes started off so far ahead of people. But once you started to get the wizards up, like fighters started up here, wizards started up down here. But as they gained in level, they kind of crossed. So fighters started to become less effective at higher levels, but mages all of a sudden, they could throw some mass destruction out there. So that was where the balance kind of came in. If you wanted to be powerful, if you wanted that power, you had to earn it. You know what I'm saying? So that was the whole point of the wizards. But first level, they were pansies. And you had to... So not only was it ridiculous, these three fucking nerds were sitting in the bushes going... Fucking dog. These three fucking nerds sitting in the bushes going, those six guys, we can do this. They leap out, go, ah, and then they start throwing magic. So they start laughing at me and they start going leaping wizards because they just the wizards leap out of the bed. They go leaping wizards, leaping wizards. I, 
I, heard, I fucking heard Leaping Wizards for years after that. Because I was the Leaping Wizards guy. So I got mad. <laughs> I got a little mad. But what I had done was, before I ran the module, um, I actually saw this encounter. And I didn't read it too close, but I was like, I saw this encounter going like, three mages? That seems weak. And then I look at their spell loadout. And it just says, three, ma three human magic users, hit points this, armor class this, and this is the spell they've chosen. And so, all three magic users had chosen the spell Magic Missile. Magic Missile is a spell that hits automatically and does 1d4 plus 1 damage. That's it. So basically these guys were going to leap out, throw three spells, 1d4 plus 1, a spell that would have killed none of them, and then engage with quarterstaffs? So I actually realized this encounter was pretty stupid before I even ran it. So I was like, even if they all concentrated fire on one guy, they might, underline, might kill one of them, but probably not. Because these guys were all, they all had at least, even at first level, they had about 8 to 10 hit points. So it was not looking good that they were going to kill these, even one guy, with magic missiles. So I actually made a note in my book that I was going to change the spells that they were going to that they were going to have. So what I actually thought, it, okay, I, I actually sat down and I thought, if, if I was one of these three magic users, and we were actually going to ambush six fucking guys, all clad in heavy armor, who are all clearly clerics, because they're openly wearing their fucking, you know, holy vestments and symbols and shit like that, you know, there's at least one fighter, if I were three fucking nerds, and we were going to brazenly attack, because I had to do that. I had to have them jump out. That was the flavor text. I had to read the flavor text. So if, they were, if I were going to have them go, ah, and leap out and attack, what would I do? I would choose fucking better spells than that. So I actually wrote down. All three guys were going to pick different spells. The first one, sleep. I had them pick sleep. So the first thing that happened was the first wizard leaps out, casts the sleep spell, knocks out four of the six. Down. Seriously. So all of a sudden, four of them go down immediately with the sleep spell. Not helping was that three of them were the clerics, and one of them was the wizard who also had the sleep spell memorized. So all that was left was the fighter and the thief. Okay? So keep that in mind. So the second mage... By the way, these guys, all three wizards win their initiative. So even though they weren't surprised, they still won initiative. So the first mage opens up with sleep, cripples half the party. Cripples two-thirds of the party, really. Um, so the first mage, the, he's like, I'm like, yes, dude. Mm. So second one opens up with uh, charm person. And so I charm the thief. And so the thief um, starts attacking his buddy. Wait, was it charm or what? It was charm. So like, um, he, he, I was like, he, as I recall, if you're asked to do something your character would never do, then you get a saving throw. But this guy, they had already established these guys didn't like each other because this, the fighter was a lawful good character and the thief was like chaotic neutral or some shit. And so like the, the lawful good fighter was like, I don't approve of your lifestyle, boy. And if you do anything in front of me, I'll run you in. And so these guys were actually like really hating each other immediately. So the thief, I was like, the, the, the first mage goes, charm person, hit that, kill that guy. He's going to turn you in or something like that. And so the thief was like, I should, shouldn't I? And so immediately the guy, the thief starts attacking the fighter. So now I've got five of the six essentially under my control. And so the third one, the, uh, the, the, as I recall, the fighter uh, turned his... He, he wasn't afraid of the mages at all. So he immediately turned his, his attack on the thief. But he's like, I don't want to hurt the guy because he's clearly not in his right mind. So I try to knock him out. I, I hit him with my gauntleted fist. And so I go, okay, you're, you're trying not to hurt him. So, okay, so he hits the guy. And, of course, he's got, he's got like 18 absurd strength. Hits the guy, knocks him out. 
So I'm like, okay, that was pretty good. So the third mage opens up with his spell, which is Ray of Enfeeblement. So um, he hits the guy and drains him for like four strength points. But what was funny was this guy was carrying so much equipment that I think what happened was he, he got enfeebled. It was like four or six strength that all of a sudden he lost. So he went from like 18 to 12 or 14. And so all of a sudden his strength dropped so much and he was wearing such heavy armor and he was carrying, he carried just fucking mule, like a pack mule on his back. He was carrying so much that he actually had become severely encumbered. And so um, his armor class dropped, his, his two hit dropped, and he couldn't hardly move. It was really funny. And so um, the, the other two wizards... The, the, the fighter uh, sets, he, 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 like, he takes a whole round, shrugs his backpack off, he lumbers towards the one mage, and he misses. And so the two mages start getting front and back of this guy and just start beating him about the head and shoulders with their sticks and actually doing a fair amount of damage at it, especially considering, fighter, uh, fi considering magic users can't hit an AD&D for shit. They are not meant to be melee fighters, but I was rolling really good that day. So they are just pounding the fuck out of this fighter, just left and right. He's getting it from in front, he's getting it from behind. These little fucking twerps are just beating the shit out of this guy. He's like, oh, oh, fuck, stop, oh, oh. And so, like, the third, mage, the third mage, he's under orders to kill the other players and free the prisoner. So he, he goes over and he starts... Uh, he, he, there's two guys who are set to guard this prisoner. And so he goes over and he starts, he, he goes over and he sees the mage and he recognizes this guy's a mage because of course he's got a quarterstaff and of course he's got a robe, recognizes he's the most dangerous guy and caves his fucking head in with his stick because he's prone, he's unconscious, he's useless. And so for like four fucking rounds, the fighter is trying to fight off these two wizards who for some reason he can't hit and for some reason are beating the crap out of him. Just bad luck, really. So, but the third mage is going around just whomping on people as they're sleeping. And I'm rolling damage, I'm not just saying you die, but you know, he's whomping on these specialty clerics and he, by the end of it, um, eventually the fighter actually did manage to overcome and defeat these two fight, these two mages who were, who were beating the crap out of him but only because these mages had three hit points. So this guy could breathe on them, and his breath would be so bad it would kill these fucking mages. So by the time he got these two mages off his back and turned on the third guy, he'd already killed two guys. He'd killed the mage, and he'd already killed one of the specialty priests, just like raining blows on him with his stick. <laughs> Oreo's caught in her blanket. Um, so two characters are dead. And so eventually they the fighter kills the third guy, and he really was a hero because he actually did overcome some pretty hefty odds, especially considering that sleep spell fucked up that party. That was a bad luck sleep roll. I'm not even denying that. I got lucky as hell to do as well as I did, but um, all of a sudden I made this nothing encounter, and I made it like really memorable and frightening because I was smart. And so the, uh, the regional coordinator after the game, you know, they win. And so the coordinator pulls me aside and he goes, you can't, what were you doing? And he goes, I go, what do you mean? And he goes, um, some of the players told me that two of them died. And I go, yeah, yeah, uh, there was this one encounter with mages and um, yeah, they, they, they died in that fight. And he goes, but um, that, 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 that's, that shouldn't happen. And I go, what do you mean? He goes, well, he goes, Players really aren't supposed to, well, what am I trying to say? He goes, he goes, he goes, those adventures are balanced so that players can finish them. And I go, yeah, I, it, well, actually, I found it was a little too easy. And he goes, what do you mean? He goes, well, I go, well, well the, the spell loadout was like three wizards, really? And he goes, well, that's, that's what's written. Did you play it as it was written? I go, yeah, yeah, basically. He goes, what? I go, well, I mean, I changed the spell loadouts for the wizards because it sucked, and it's so not, it's not logically what wizards would. And it was like it wasn't it wasn't even ridiculous spells. Every wizard has fucking sleep, right? And he goes, but you you changed it. You you can't you can't change it. 
And I go, oh, well, sorry. And he goes, no, no, you don't understand. Like, he goes, y you know how you know how upset players get when their characters die. And I go, that's D and D. And he goes, that's not RPGA though. And I, I, I'm really confused. I go, but it's D and D. Players are at risk of dying. He goes, not in the RPGA. And I, what? He goes, it takes a long time for players to level up in the RPGA because at best, RPGA games are run once a week, usually once a month. And especially in Arizona, really RPGA only plays like once every convention, so like maybe twice a year. So, you know, like if you start killing characters, it takes a long time for those characters to get running and it fresh. I'm like, I'm like, dude, most players only play once a week anyway. Once a month if they're lucky. And I'm like, it takes a long time for anyone to level up. And, you know, when players die, they're upset. But when, when characters die, players are upset. But that's how the cookie crumbles. You know, like, play smart. You won't die. And sometimes shit happens. Sometimes the dice come down. And he goes, we can't have that. We can't have you killing characters. And I'm like, oh, look, I didn't go down there trying to kill player characters, all right? I didn't go down there and be like, this will fucking show them. Like, I didn't do that. Like, I just set up, a, I set up an encounter that really was stacked against the bad guys, and that's how the dice came down. I wasn't really being unfair here. It said that, you know, the adventure said these guys were trying to kill them. It was said they were trying to find, trying to secure the prisoner and escape with them. So, like, that's what I did. I was like... I said two guys to take care of the only guy who was standing, and the other guy was trying to free the prisoners. And he's like, but he's like, we 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 can't have you DMing games if if you're going to be just killing player characters. And I'm like, so they kicked me out. I I couldn't DM RPGA events anymore. But apparently that's how the RPGA rolls. That, apparently it's been that way for a while, um, and it's even more so now than it ever was. Um, I just remember, I remember my older brother teaching me how to play, like, first edition D&D, &D, and players would die all the time. I've had players die, and I've bitched about it, but, like, I took it like a man. You know, like, I've never complained that... I, I, I took it like a man, you know, like, I, I, I've had players die, and it sucks. Sure, it sucks, but, like, that's... My characters went out fighting. Even the characters I thought were kind of robbed, like I remember playing Linkara's game, one of my, I'm uh, not Linkara, uh, in Lord Cat's game. I remember one of my characters got killed in Lord Cat's game. I thought it was unfair. I thought the adventure was stacked against me, and I didn't, I didn't want to play in that game anymore. But I wasn't like, I, I was like, you know, fine, I'll, I'll roll up somebody else, I, I guess, if you want me to. And so like the game kind of fell apart after that. But like I was like, okay, fine. At least I know how it's going to operate. I know how we're, I know the rules. So, so whatever. It was a first level character. I didn't give a fuck, you know. So, but I'm like, I was, I was looking through some of the RPGA stuff lately. You know, third edition, why are you chasing your tail? I'm starting looking through the third and fourth edition stuff lately, and they're doing the same thing. Characters are not supposed to die in these games. In fact, I'm looking through these modules, and <laughs> she's eating her own tail. I'm looking through these modules, and it actually has fudge rules written into the module. For instance, like let's say, let's say um, orcs attack. And they're like, so let's say six orcs attack. And it says in the notes, if the players are having a hard time with this, with this encounter, <laughs> it says if the players are having a hard time with this encounter, consider reducing their hit points. Or if the players are very beaten up by the time they reach this encounter, Consider reducing the number of orcs in this room. And I'm like... You know, I get it. I, I do. I get that players are supposed to reach the end of the adventure. You know, I get it. Because if a player dies in an RPG adventure, it does kind of screw the rest of the party. I get it. But... And I, I, I actually get... Wanting to, if the player is having a run of bad luck, that you should go easy on them. 
you know, like, like don't make everything a, a ball buster. Don't, and I'm not, I never do this. I never go into the game wanting to kill the players. I talk smack to them, but I'm never fudging so that they die. Believe it or not, I want them to succeed. I do, but I don't want to make it too easy. I want them to feel like they've accomplished something. Right? I want them to feel like they've, they worked together as a team, they were smart, and that they overcame and struggled and were victorious over a game that was harsh but fair. So, like, this game is a no-lose scenario. And what's worse is the players know that. The players know that I cannot kill them. And I think every player in the RPG knows that you can't lose. And if there's a game, you, if, if you can't lose a game, that game is not fun. There's no victory in overcoming adversity because there's no penalty for losing. There's, if there's no adversity, you can't overcome it. So it's really just, it's masturbation. You know, it's, it really is just a, it, it is just a bunch of players talking in funny accents, jerking off. <clears throat> because they can't lose. Um, so there's no penalty for failure. So players are going to act like jackasses. They're not going to take the characters seriously. They're not going to take the game seriously because if the game's going too hard on them, the DM's going to go easy on them. So, like, I get... You know, I've done this. If, if the players are having a hard time, I've reduced the hit points of monsters. I've reduced the number of monsters that are in the next room. But I've never done it to be like... These characters have to see the end of the dungeon, so I'm, I'm gonna, if a guy's dying, I'm gonna have the monsters spontaneously seek another target to hit. You know, th I'm gonna have the monsters behave the way monsters would act. If the monsters would regroup and get reinforcements, they're gonna do that, but I've never understood this, this concept where I'm supposed to let them win. What are you fucking children? You fu what kind of fucking schoolyard bullshit is this where I have to let you win? Fuck you guys. Like, not, not fuck you guys, but like, I'm not going to let you win. I'm not going to let you walk all over me. I mean, I'm trying to run a fair game here. You guys, like, you wouldn't respect me if I was going to let you win. Or if it seemed like I was going to let you win. That's why I so object to what the RPGA kind of stands for nowadays. Just because those modules are written with the express intent to let the players win. And that so wasn't how it started. And that's so not how I play this game. But yeah, um, I, uh, I didn't play by the rules. I got two players killed and uh, I got kicked out because I didn't let them win. So that's all I got. Um, I, I'm sure some of you guys are in the RPGA, and I'm sure I'm going to get hate for that. And I'm sure some of you guys are like, I don't let them win. I've had players die in my games all the time, and I've never been kicked out. Okay. It would, maybe, it was just, I, I'll admit, maybe it was just my experience. I had a guy who was a hard ass. That was just me. Um, but really, it is my experience that they're supposed, they're supposed to win. You're not supposed to kill anybody. Because people will complain that you're unfair, and there's bitching, and there's moaning, and I'm sorry, it's just the old schooler in me. It rankles at that concept. I've had high-level characters die. I've had them die in really heroic fashion, and I've had them die due to completely fucked up luck. And you know what? That happens. And I just came from a school that didn't bitch and complain when that happened. So... That's the story of the Leaping Wizards. Hope you enjoyed. And stay old school.